The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, Holy Father, keep them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one just as we are one. When I was with them, I protected them in your name that you gave me, and I guarded them, and none of them was lost except the son of destruction, in order that the scripture may be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you. I speak this in the world, so that they may share my joy completely. I give them your word, and the world hated them, because they do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. Consecrate them in your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I send them into the world. And I consecrate myself for them, so that they also may be consecrated in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, which included man, who he gave dominion over all other creatures. God claimed it as good and rested on the seventh day. He walked with man and dwelt among him. This seems like paradise. And what a perfect story. If it only had a perfect ending... Why couldn't it have remained that way? Unfortunately, there were two factors involved in this story. You see, God gave man free will. He also gave the fallen angel Satan to the earth. You see, man took that freedom of choice and broke unity with God to bring havoc to this beautiful creation. So rather than simply being that God called it good and it remained that way, God gave man and Satan control over the earth. And look and see what we have done with it. Every year there are 40 to 50 million abortions on this planet. One out of every three people on this planet suffers from malnutrition. And one out of nine of them go to bed hungry. If you calculate the positive and the negative net gain of forestry, we are seeing deforestation on our planet. In 45 years, all of the oil will run out. 41% of our first marriages end in divorce. 54% of households have children living with both of their biological parents. And 96 Americans are killed by guns each, every, each and every day. This just makes me want to run and live in a little cave and pray to God and get myself to heaven. As I was raising my children, I often joked that oh, I'd love to be like the Robinson family from Lost in Space. Put my family on the spaceship, we'd go to the moon, and my daughters would never date a boy. Unfortunately, I can't run away. We can't run away. We're not all called to the ministry of being a monk. We must live in the world. We are not part of it, but we must live in it. So even though it seems easier at times to escape the world by isolating ourselves, we must, have a fi we must find a way to live in it and fulfill God's will. Because... It was not God's intent. Jesus did not pray to take us out of the world or to change the world. He prayed to protect us from the evil one. In his words, I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that, that you keep them from the evil one. 
we are not supposed to isolate ourselves from the world. Rather, we are to live a Christian life within it, deep in the filth and messiness of the world. We are to go into it and proclaim the good news of the gospel. We are to comfort the lonely, heal the sick, feed the hungry, and lead the lost to the way of the Lord. That can only be accomplished by us living in it, because the world is not going to fix itself. Later on in his priestly prayer, Jesus prays, I wish that, I, that where I am they also may be with me. So where is Jesus? When he was here on earth, he walked along the borders where the discarded of society were, the marginalized. He was with the sick and the sinners. He was in the temple where evil had taken over. He dined at the table of sinners. We too must go where Jesus went. We must take him where he isn't known, and we must reveal him where he has been hidden. St. Teresa of Calcutta went from her nice little schoolhouse to the streets of Calcutta, where she knew that people were in need of Jesus. St. Don Bosco was fulfilling his priestly vows, but he started a home for young boys who were running the streets and causing havoc amongst their city. St. Maximilian Kobe was comforting, praying, and healing those who were condemned to death in the death camp of Auschwitz. Yet, he took the place of another one condemned to die. Pope Francis, he's even living within our world. He sends out tweets on Twitter every day to lead the world to, be a, to live a Christian life. Jesus also prayed that we would be one just as he is one with God. So in this world, we are to be a community of believers that work together to save it. Going back to the Garden of Eden, we can see that Satan was able to divide Adam and Eve. So now we can see why it was so important for Jesus to pray in his priestly prayer that we would be unified. Not only did Adam and Eve defy the commands of God by eating from the tree of life, but immediately they passed the blame. No, it was her fault. No, it was Satan's fault. So we can immediately see the division that Satan put between fellow men. And then immediately we can see that that division was passed on to the next generation. As we read in the Bible, we read that Cain killed Abel. We must unite to spread the love of Christ. We are to love one another in this world. We need to find ways to connect with the people where they are and show them the love of Christ in this filthy world. Whether that be on Facebook or Twitter, sitting next to another parent at their child's sporting event, at a family or friend picnic or barbecue, sitting next to a co-worker at lunch, or passing a neighbor in need along the path that we are on in this world. We are in this world, but we do not belong to it. Our home is meant to be in another place, dwelling with God, immersed in his love. But that doesn't mean that we are to escape this world. I'd like to finish by reminding us of one other prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen.